I wished just once that I could lie in the grass outside the catacombs for the night, for a night and put these haunted dreams to rest. I must end these nightly visions and seek the truth. Joseph Flair. Oh, God. It is truly a pity that my dear wife, Eveline, passed away birthing Lisbeth. She would have loved to see them all grow. I cannot help but think that she would have been able to tame this wild streak that they all have exhibited lately. A mother is a soothing influence. I unfortunately cannot offer them this solace. I wish I could understand what brought on this recent behavior. I have received a letter today from Ambrose's boarding school. He has been expelled. I don't know what to do with that boy. With the behavior of the children so appalling, I have no choice but to bring them home. Perhaps I can find a tutor. I hope being under my watchful eye will calm their spirits. The last six weeks have been terrible. The tutor was a complete disaster. In fact, the poor man just packed his bags and left in the night. Any form of discipline is hopeless with Ambrose, and almost seems completely lost on the others. The only thing I have been able to do is play to their interests. I have noticed that each child has their own avid curiosity. Strange to see it manifest at such an early age, but who am I to discourage the one moment of peace I can find with them? I now understand why the children are behaving wildly. Jeremiah came to me frightened and crying. Several years ago, the children broke into my library and procured one of my research books without my knowledge. But how was I to know a twelve-year-old boy would take interest in those dusty tomes? I do not know what passage they read, but I suspect that it has led to the current predicament concerning their behaviors and eccentricities. Jeremiah says that they only that they woke the spirits of the island. Hopefully I can determine what the children have done. Perhaps there's a solution. I have pored over the volumes of research, and I am no closer to understanding what Jeremiah and the children may have conjured. None of the incantations in the books could have caused this to happen. Calling a demon or a consulting spirit should not have had such long-lasting, disturbing effects. I even traveled to the stones. Nothing there gave me clues as to what happened. Perhaps if they t had only told me at the time, I would have had more insight. Now any clues would be long gone. I have determined the stones are some sort of focus. Perhaps there is a reason so many people have been attracted and repulsed by this land. It seems that my own fascination with the standing stones has wrought its own corruption, has wrought its corruption upon my own children. My own children. Eveline's letter. Dearest mother, all is not well here at the Covenant estate. Joseph, my husband, who has once charmed me with his good will and smile, now seems distant and reclusive. I realize that when we, when we met, there are those imperfections one must look past, and that your heart helps you forgive. However, Joseph's strange obsession keeps him in the library at all hours of the night. Seldom are we spending time together, and even more rarely does he want to exercise his husbandly right towards me. Batch bow wow. I'm beginning to feel inadequate, especially when he talks of his desire for children prancing around the estate. What am I to do? I bide most of my time alone in the greenhouse, reminiscing of my sweet youth and the rich and gallant Peter Ro Roanca, Ro Rokina, who would wait patiently on me and shower me with expensive gifts like my beloved pearl necklace. Things could have been different had I kept that social path. Instead, I feel like I'm the fool for getting involved with Joseph Covenant. His prime moments are being spent in his library with his books twice as old as me. Apparently my visage can't garner his attention. Would what dear advice could you give me, dearest mother? I'll be waiting for your response. I hope this is I hope that this letter finds you and father as well. Tell father not to worry about his little robin that I've left the nest, but shall never leave with his heart. With love, Evelyn. Garden key. The door to the manor gardens is locked. The cook says the maid is the only one with the key, and she is cleaning Kissinger's room in the east wing. Kissinger. While that name might not ring true for the servant, I am deeply disturbed that Otto Kissinger would even be here. What the hell does that bastard want with my family and with my friend and his family? I can only be sure that when our paths cross, I will get more than a stern word from me.
he will get more than a stern word from me. I only wonder how he plans to answer my questions when my when my hands are gripped tightly around his throat. Otto has done more damage, more to damage my reputation than I care to remember. I have no doubts that should he find should he find out that I've made it to the Covenant Estate, he'll stop at nothing to foil my attempts at uncovering the mysteries that seem to be plaguing this family and my dear friend. Moondor notes. Ah, jeez. Reddish leaves swirl in the wind like lost souls in search of rest, like an open sketchbook focused on my dreams. This land is forever pictured as comforting autumn dusk, replete with, go with a golden sky, with crackling river water and bubbling marshes that dot the land. It feels like a romantic artist canvas. Upon further investigation, I have sensed horrendous visions of a gnarled doom decorated as a picturesque facade in this endless autumn dusk. Spiny trees root deep into the foul earth, licking the ground dry of all that is good. Carcasses populate the brush, their putrid remains swallowed whole by the land, and corners of this malevolent area are teeming with vicious, ungodly prey. All whilst the grass stretches over this land, twisting together like veins of pulsating sinew, and as if the ground were alive, keen of the inhabitants that parade on its back. Beady, black, soulless eyes flash across the air. Tiny, quick-winged bats streak through the bright sky, flying razors, waiting for the perfect moment to descend. As they swoop by, I see sharp, bloody teeth, a wicked, demonic smile. From the from the darting blurs, I hear an ominous whistling that chills my soul. They own the skies here. Wraith-like, blooded minions, overseers without heart or soul. Patrol this land, slash and stitch techniques. Permeate their faces and arms, patched together like cheap quilts, using the skin from the bodies of rank corpses. They gather and live like packs of rabbit wolves, instigating fights for supremacy. These abominations thirst for my destruction. They are mostly clustered around footpaths that seem to traverse upward along the cliffside, but alternate groups are planted among watering holes in the hollowed trees. Further down the, pla the path, it is as if the shadows were swallowing the surrounding hole, surroundings whole without a penchant of logic or drop of meaning. It is as if the only reason for this actually lies in darkness itself, like royalty that rules the black void, entombed in the night infinite. It is she, the eternal mistress of shadows, Aaron. Well, that's it for story time for now. I will see you all later. I'm Frag Penguin, and I leave you with this question. If you could have eternal life, what would you be willing to do for it? See you later, folks.